On slide three, we are going to turn to uh, hidden Markov and latent transition analysis. These are two models for uh, longitudinal data where the interest is in um, states changing over time, that is, categorical variables changing over time. At the top, we have a um, hidden Markov model for five time points. At the bottom, we have a latent transition model for three time points. The boxes are the observed variables denoted by u. And we're going to take them to be categorical variables, typically binary or ordinal variables, although nominal variables or count variables or continuous variables are possible as well. C, the circles in the picture, are uh, latent categorical variables, and they are on a nominal scale. Hidden Markov models are typically measuring one variable per time point, as is shown in this picture, and usually considers very long time series, so many, many time points across here. And typically, they actually work with uh, only one subject or one observational unit. So for instance, it could be the, uh, the daily count of epileptic episodes in a patient. In many applications, they, there could be up to hundreds or thousands of time points, for instance, as used with speech processing. Latent transition analysis, on the other hand, considers several measurements, several indicators of the latent class variable per time point, in this case two. And it con typically considers fairly short time series, two or three time points at, as in this case, maybe a maximum of five. Although you can certainly do analysis up to say 10 time points, albeit leading to very he heavy computations. The um, Typical situation is that you have a large sample of individuals, typically in the thousands. Whereas hidden Markov modeling has a long history in statistics, LTA, latent transition analysis, seems to be more recent, have a more recent history, with contributions from both sides of the Atlantic Ocean. In Europe, we have contributions by Rolf Langeheine and over here in the United States by John Graham, Linda Collins. And Linda Collins has done quite a lot of interesting work in this area, and his, much of it has been summarized in her book with Stephanie Lanza from 2010, Latent Class and Latent Transition Analysis. Just to, to uh, get our ideas firmly planted in uh, reality, Let's take a look at an example from uh, this article, 2008, quite influential article in developmental psychology because it introduced a new SAS procedure for LTA called SAS PROC LTA. And the application deals with transitions in dating and sexual risk behavior. The data are from uh, the National Longitudinal Survey of Youth, so approximately 3,000 individuals three time points, and we're looking at young adults ages 17 to 18. Items are, in this case, three, and actually in the article they were four items, but one item is largely redundant and leads to violations of conditional independence, so it has to be deleted here in these analysis. But the analysis of these three items give the same results as the um, original article with four items. So we're looking at past year number of dating partners, and here's an ordinal variable with three categories, zero, one, two or more. Three categories also for past year number of sexual partners, and then we have a binary variable indicating if, whether or not you've been exposed to sexually transmitted diseases. The way you uh, understand this analysis is uh, by looking at measurement probabilities and transition probabilities. 
Measurement probabilities are given on this slide, where the columns correspond to five different latent classes. So five categories of that latent class variable C. Non-daters, daters, monogamous, multi-partner safe, multi-partner exposed. The row sections here correspond to the three observed items. And the interpretation of the latent classes is obtained by looking at the pattern of probabilities. So for instance, non-daters are characterized by having a high probability for having zero dating partners and low probabilities for the other two alternatives. Number of sex partners, zero. And a number of, I'm sorry, exposed to STD or not, high probability of the no category. So the high probabilities here identify this class as non-daters. In contrast, you have the daters, where you have a high probability for at least two dating partners, but zero sex partners, so just daters. And exposed to STD is a no with probability one. The monogamous, monogamous class is characterized by a higher probability for one dating partner and one sex partner. So ambiguous picture for the STD. Multi-partner sa safe has uh, at least two partners with high probability, at least two sexual partners with high probability, but not exposed to STDs. So that's where the safe part of that name comes from. Multi-exposed has the same pattern of probabilities for the first two items, but has a, an elevated probability for being exposed to sexually transmitted diseases. On slide seven, we have the same columns, but now the rows are also the latent classes. So we have a cross classification. So on the diagonal, you see high probabilities, bolded, that corresponds to staying in the same class. So 0 0.627 is the probability that if in a year you were a non-dater, you will be a non-dater in the following year with this probability. Same thing for daters, for monogamous. Multi-partner safe, you have a little bit lower probability of staying there, and some non-ignorable probability of transitioning to the multi-partner exposed, the risky class. For multi-partner exposed, high probability of staying in that same class, but a certain probability of going back to a monogamous relationship. So that gives you an idea about the central parts of the LTA model. So as we discussed, we talked about the measurement probabilities, that is the relationship between C and the U's. We talked about the probability of U given or conditional on the C variable. It's really a latent class analysis for each time point, where we typically would have measurement invariance across time. So the probabilities would be held to be equal across time, so that we're sure that we're considering the same latent variable construct. For the uh, latent part, or the structural part, as we say in structural equation modeling, you can break it up into initial status probabilities, probabilities for the first time point, and then transition probabilities, probabilities for C2 given C1, C3 given C2. So they look like this. And that's the model that's been used quite a lot. There are extensions for instance, to mover stayer modeling, where stayers is, is a, th that, that is a latent class variable really, with two categories, so one more latent class variable, where the stayers are individuals who will remain in the same class at the next time point with probability one. So the diagonal elements of the transition matrix uh, are ones and the off diagonal are zero. You have zero probability of transitioning. And that typically picks up uh, 
a substantial percentage of the sample. Whereas the mover part, mover class, is like in regular LTA. They can move or they can stay. You often do multiple group analysis, that is you have observed groups, observed uh, divisions of the sample as opposed to the unobserved division of the mover stayer. You usually look at measurement invariance, so measurement invariance across groups, not across time. For instance, do males and females have the same uh, dating transitions? Covariates are often brought in, covariates that influence latent class probabilities as well as transition probabilities. And as a matter of fact, you can also let them influence the observed variables which then gets back to the issue of whether or not you have measurement invariance. Now we can look at these models, hidden Markov and latent transition analysis, and there is something missing in these models that make them unnecessarily restrictive. There's a simple extension of these models which makes them much more flexible and presumably will fit the data better and give better estimates. We're going to take a look at what's missing in these models from several different perspectives. We're going to consider both single indicator measures per time point and multiple indicators per time point. In a single indicator case, we're going to take a look at a statistical perspective where we're going to bring in multi-level modeling thinking because after all LTA has level 1 time and level 2 subject if you want to look at it that way. Time is nested within subject. And from that statistical perspective we're going to talk about random effects especially random intercepts. And then we're going to take a look at the substantive perspective and look at latent trait theory in psychology and that leads us to consider between subject differences that are stable over time. And then we switch to multiple indicators per time point and take a psychometric perspective where we're going to look at issues of measurement non-invariance both in the context of multi-level factor analysis and multi-level latent class analysis and relating that multi-level latent class analysis to the latent transition analysis situation that we're interested in.